Good afternoon and welcome to St. George Episcopal Church here in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. If you'd like a bulletin, you can find one in the comments on Facebook. The service begins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own in interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is, this not, is, is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. 
we are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew glory to you Lord Christ Jesus said beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them for then you have no reward from your father in heaven so whenever you give alms do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, an ashless ash Wednesday. Seems like it was um, about a year ago where we um, celebrated, we marked Ash Wednesday, and we came together, and uh, there was a lot of of ash on my thumb because I put my hand on so many different heads and made the sign of the cross in ash with my thumb. When I add up all of the, the folks who were here as part of the school chapel service, as all the folks who were here as part of, of the, the three church services, uh, I, I must have put ash on several hundred heads and my thumb was sore for days. <laughs> and were that the case now, I would gladly, gladly be able to, uh, to have to deal with a sore thumb, maybe even a, a, a cracked thumb, than to have to do all of this online. But one of the things that we've learned since uh, a year ago is this. We ain't in control. We are not in control. We cannot control what nature does. We cannot control uh, viruses or winter storms or snow. We can't control rolling power outages. We can't control uh, things freezing up. We can't. And if Ash Wednesday is about humbling ourselves before God. If it's about acknowledging our own mortality and the limits of that mortality. And putting our whole trust and, in, and faith in the God who can. Then this is a great way. To Mark Ash Wednesday. And here's another here's another thing. You know, there are so many times when when I leave the house and and I get in the car and if I'm not really paying attention, I can't remember. Did I lock the door? Or if I get on a road and I'm going someplace other than church, I find myself sometimes just ending up at church going. This is not where I was coming. You know, that muscle memory, that that memory of doing the same thing over and over and over again to where it almost is like you, you don't think about it. You know, that's real. That happens to to us so much. And then, of course, we go back and check the house and the house is locked and the stove is off and the curling iron is off. You know, all those things, the garage doors down. Today is a day 
when we get knocked off our routine and we get an opportunity to really pay attention, to pay attention to what this day and this season of Lent is all about. And it's not, my dear friends, about going through the motions. It's not about muscle memory or spiritual muscle memory. It's not about just, you know, going through the, the, the rituals. It's about really digging into our hearts and digging out our hearts from all of the stuff that keeps us, that keeps us from truly, fully offering our lives to God in the name of Christ. You know, when I, when I look at this Isaiah passage, and I love this Isaiah passage, uh, most places will read the Joel passage, passage because it talks about casting ashes. But this Isaiah passage, it's a little bit different. It, it really does show us what the role of the prophet is and then gives us some reminders about what a faith life should look like. See, the role of the prophet is to call God's people to repentance for God's people to turn around, to follow God and to live as God desires. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob, their sins. Day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. Did you hear that? They acted as though they were a nation that practiced righteousness. And rather, they forsook the ordinance of God. They were going through the motions. They were just going through the motions. Going through those religious motions do not please God. There's another, there's another uh, prophet, Amos. Amos 5.21. The Lord says this. I hate, I despise your festivals and take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Ouch. Ouch. As a reminder. That it's got to be. Our heart. That God is after. Not our foreheads. Our heart. And then God's people say. Why do we fast? But you don't see. Why do we humble ourselves? Lord but you don't notice. I said this on Sunday, Lenten disciplines are not about self-improvement. They're not about us. They're not about proving our faith. They're about removing all of those things that keep us, that keep us from a deep, real, transforming relationship with God. You serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. You won't fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Well, this is bad news. This is, this is not comforting at all. What can we do? What can we do, Lord, that will please you? Well, next verse. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice. To undo the thongs of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free. To break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? And when you see them naked to cover them and to not hide yourself from your own kin. These words probably uh, sound a little bit familiar because Jesus says words very similar to this in the gospel. In fact, he, he almost takes this and, and says it almost verbatim in Matthew 25. He restates these. When did we see you naked and clothe you and hungry and feed you and thirsty? When did we see you a prisoner and visited you? And Jesus said, when you did it to the least of these, you did it 
for me. Then your light, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. The result of living out our faith in this in this way is that we become the people who God created us to be people who cast God's light into the frigid darkness. We become a people who bring healing as we go about doing God's work. And God promises, not just promises to heed our cry, God promises to be with us. Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like the noonday. If we heed the words of the prophet, if we heed the words of the Lord God, then we will be people blessed to be a blessing to others. God promises to satisfy all of those spiritual needs and help us grow. And then God promises that we'll be rebuilt, renewed, remade. We will become partners with God in repairing the breach in our world, in restoring God's way of love in our world. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. On this ashless Ash Wednesday, we have an opportunity to get right back to the basics of our faith. And the basics of our faith is a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus. We have the opportunity to offer Jesus what he wants the most, which is our heart. Not our foreheads, not our hands, not our feet. What Jesus wants most is our heart. And if we can give Jesus our heart fully, without any conditions, without any doubt, then, then, then what we do with our hands and where we go with our feet and what we say with our mouth and, and we can offer the rest of ourselves and know that God will do in us and through us way more than we could ever, ever ask or imagine. May we open our hearts to God this day. May we be changed from our self-concerned and self-centered lives into the likeness of Jesus, the self-giving Jesus, who invites us to journey with him during this Lenten season, all the way to the cross. May we die to self so that we might live in Jesus and live for Jesus and share his light into this cold, cold world. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior. 
and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. And if you are able, wherever you are, I would invite you to, to kneel as a sign of, of penitence, as a sign of humility. Join me in this first part of the lit litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Lord, we confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, 
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. All right, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, number one, uh, we will have uh, Sunday church at 10 a.m. It will be both in person and online. It'll be probably based on what the forecast is and based on how wet everything is going to be. We'll be inside the church. So 10 a.m. in this space for our worship uh, for the first Sunday of Lent 2021. Uh, so we'll be here. Uh, immediately following that, uh, our, uh, our Shrove Tuesday, now uh, first Sunday of Lent Pancake Supper drive through will be, uh, will, the, the pickup times will be 11.45 to 12.45. If you are here uh, for the 10, uh, 10 o'clock worship, uh, you'll probably be able to just swing by and pick it up on your way on your way home. The other thing that's happening that day is that immediately following our worship service, we will have a, a Zoom uh, Bible study. It'll be a study on the Gospel of Mark led by Reverend Susan and me. And uh, we will go through that. It's going to be a hybrid opportunity. So if you would like to be in person for part of that, you're welcome to do that. Uh, and if you are still wanting to, to stay home and participate from home, that's perfectly all right. We're going to send out a Zoom link. And so we'll have some folks on Zoom. We'll have some people uh, in the church and we will do uh, that. And that will go from about 11.15 to noon. And I'm going to ask Reverend Susan to come up here um, and introduce us. We have a, a celebrity here today. Um, we, we do have a celebrity, and I'm, I'm just going to keep you a couple more minutes, but I, I, want, you to, I want you to see the celebrity here. <laughs> it's, it's, a really, um, it's a really great day. Celebrity, we have hope. See, we have hope, y'all. We have hope at St. George. There she is. So, Susan, you want to read that concluding prayer? Or, oh, you don't have a microphone. Okay, I'll read the concluding prayer. Anyway. Uh, we got a concluding prayer, and then we're going to get a song, and uh, you'll ha hopefully you will have a blessed day. If you need anything, uh, please reach out to somebody on the church staff. Uh, our, our email is, is, and our cell phones is just as bad as, as y'all's, but reach out and let us know if you need something, and we'll, we'll do what we can. Our concluding prayer is this. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn is hymn number 142. Thank you to the music team for getting out in this weather and uh, blessing us with, with music today. Thank you, guys. Here we go.
God bless y'all. Take care. Thank you for joining. Share this with all your folks on Facebook in case they didn't get a chance to see this live. So when they get their power and their internet back, they'll be able to check in. Bye. God bless. Thank you.